Hello, my name is Jonas. And my name is Alex. And we are Tesla, Teams Exploring Science with a live audience. We are named after Nikola Tesla, a scientist who helped us gain a better understanding of electricity. We are the science achievers from the Community Initiatives team at the Museum of Science and Industry. This is a live science education show every Wednesday at 5 p.m. And this is a giant Tesla coil at the Museum of Science and Industry. Yes, I almost forgot. Thank you, Jonas. No problem. This season of Tesla, we'll be talking about the form of science called sound and music and the instruments that produce it. Hey, that's really cool. That's, that sounds really cool. Hey, get it? <laughs> sounds I get it. Really cool. I get it. Okay. Funny okay. stuff. I get it. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's first talk about sound as a wave created by a vibrating object. All right, Jonas. Yes, sound is a disturbance through matter which means energy is transmitted through that matter that is disturbed, right? Correct. So keep in mind that the matter doesn't move no matter what. It's, that's really cool, isn't it? Yeah. And unlike light from the sun, which can travel through empty space, um, sound has traveled through matter like solids, liquids, and gases. Mm -hmm. um, it's described as a mechanical compression wave or simply a compression wave, whereas light is described as a kind of wave called a transverse electromagnetic wave, or EM wave. Perfect, Jonas. Yeah, that's really cool. EM waves. That sounds, you know, scientific. <laughs> um, all right. Well, it's actually a fancy way of saying that light waves move at right angles in the direction of travel. Correct. That's right. But what about sound waves? How do they move in relation to the direction of travel? Let's find out. Okay, I have a diagram um, to show our viewers. All right, let me get that pulled up for you. All right, so this, yes, this one, Jonas. Thank you. All right, here is our diagram. Okay. Okay, sound waves are compression waves, and they move in the same direction they travel and they produce a, <clears throat> let me start over, they produce, um, I think the word you're looking for is regions, Jonas. No, it's not regions. Yes. Don't, don't, don't mess with me, okay? And they produce, okay, let me start over. In the process, they produce a region of compressions and rare fractions. Yeah. That is, factions, my bad. Yeah, but what are compressions and rarefactions? Let me explain. Please, let me explain. It's a simple um, meaning. It simply means uh, sound waves uh, produce rare fractions that are uh, compressions and rarefactions, and the regions are just stretched out. All right, all right. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Compressions, as we can see here, are regions that are squeezed together, like you're squeezing a slinky together. All the lines are just jumbled up in these little parts right here. Let me see if I can zoom in so our viewers can see a little bit closer. And yes, that's a compression. Everything is jumbled up together. Where's the refraction? Yes, you're right. That is the refraction. The rarefaction is where everything is all spread apart. It's kind of like you're stretching a slinky out. Which is really cool. It does look like a slinky. Yeah. So, we can also describe these regions as crests and troughs as seen in... We have an image of a sine wave. We can see those crests and troughs in our sine wave. Let me get that for you. Thanks, Jonas. Actually, um, let me zoom back in there. I would actually like to compare both diagrams at the same time. All right. I'll get both. Because if we compare these waves, we can see something really, really cool. All right? Just let me set that up. Nice. Okay. okay. Perfect. So this crest right here, or the top peak of the wave, actually corresponds to the compression part of this wave. Mm -hmm. So what do you think this trough part of the wave corresponds to? Then? I'm guessing it's the stretched out bit, the rare factions. Yes, exactly. They correspond to each other, the, um, the rare factions. The trough, the bottom peak of the wave, corresponds to the rare faction. So we can see a pattern. Crest, compression, trough, rarefaction, and it goes over and over and over again. Right. 
Right, and the sine wave is a simple form, the simplest form of wave motion. It is, contains just one frequency or pure tone. Most sounds are not pure tones because they uh, contain many different types of frequencies or tones. Wow, that's very interesting, Jonas. But a tuning fork, like the one here, okay. this has just one pitch or tone or pure tone called a pitch. Um, can we show our audience what that sounds like? Sure. Let me just go a little hitter here. Wow, that does sound pure. And this only has one frequency. All right, Jonas. Now let's take a look at, let's talk about music, a special kind of sound. Okay. Well, music is a very special, very special kind of sound because it is made up of various sine waves with different frequencies. Oh. Whereas noise is pretty much just jumbled up sounds and they don't have any like distinct frequency or direction to them. They're just like thunder, for instance. It's just random noise. Yes. Random sound jumbled up together. It has no order to it. Yes, that's correct, Jonas. That you remind you reminded me of something. Um, we define music as organized sound with rhythm or time. Correct. All right. So, did you know that music is actually a language? No, I actually don't know. That's very interesting that you would mention that. Yeah. So, music actually has a few parts, right? Um, it has a voice mm -hmm. and character. Each musical instrument <clears throat> has a voice with a specific character or timbre. Timbre, spelled T-I-M-B-R-E, is the voice quality that allows you to distinguish the different voices among all of your friends. Mm. Pretty interesting, huh? Yeah, that's how I can tell when you enter the room is for someone else. Yeah, but I have a specific timbre. Exactly, and I have a specific timbre. You have a specific timbre. Okay. <laughs> Muse can <laughs> <laughs> Music can speak to your emotions and make you feel different ways. Let's listen to a few examples to get a better understanding of this amazing uh, emotional response. Okay, Jonas. Okay, so let's listen to our first example and tell me if you get a dark or a more light kind of, like bright or a dark emotion from it. All right, Jonas. Let me pull that up for our viewers. Okay. Yeah, that is really bright, Jonas. It makes me feel like I'm riding in on a horse, about to save the day because the bandits, the bandits stole the, the train car. That's really cool. Mm, it makes you kind of think of an old Western movie, you know? Yeah, exactly. On the cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's check out another song. I want you to tell me, is this a bright or dark emotion? All right, let's listen to it. I'll uh, be listening. I'll get it pulled up for you. Hmm. Yeah, all right. Sorry about that. All right, here, Jonas. Listen right. to this. Remember, bright or dark. So what do you say? I would say I was a little scared during that. I, that was very dark emotionally. I felt very dark emotionally. Okay. Well, now it's your turn. Okay. Tell me if you get a warm or a bright emotion from this. All right. Let's check out this next song. All right. I'll get it pulled up for you. Okay. And in the meantime, 
Here it is. Oh, that is, that is really warm. Mm. That's smooth, like caramel. It's, it's bringing me back to my Latin roots, for mm. sure. It's, it, it, it's oh, you, so you have Latin cool. roots? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, uh, my family is uh, Mexican and Puerto Rican. Ah, oh, that's nice to know. All right. Last song, Jonas. Okay. And I want you to tell me if it's happy or dark, okay? Okay. This one should be fairly simple. I mean. Here, listen to this. Mm. I see you, I see you moving there, Jonas. Don't you mock me. I feel like I'm at the beach right now. That's one way I to get, put it. I get that, like, you know, pineapple feeling. You know, I'm sipping juice out of, like, a coconut. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I feel happy. I'm, I'm in a good mood right now. That kind of got me over from the dark emotion earlier. Yeah, I would, I would, I would agree with you, Jonas. Mm. All right. Okay, now that we know that music can speak to us through musical instruments, how about you guys stay tuned and learn about these amazing instruments and the incredible sounds that they produce? In the meantime, how about you guys hear this other song that we have for you? All right. All right. Let me get that pulled up for our viewers, and we'll see you guys in a little bit. Hi, my name is Yulia. And I'm Kelsey. So, each musical instrument looks and sounds different and usually fits into one of three following categories. Chordophones, aerophones, and idiophones. Okay, let's first talk about the chordophones. With members of the chordophone group, the initial sound is produced by a stretched vibrating string, like the instrument shown in the image here. And here we have a violin, a viola, a cello, and a bass. Yes, and with these particular chordophones or string instruments, the sound is usually produced by pulling a bow across, across the strings, which causes them to vibrate and produce sound. Hey, wait a minute. Do these four instruments have different names and sounds as people do? Yes, they sure do. They can be identified by either sight or sound. And we're going to choose two of these instruments to compare and contrast. And I remember that compare means to see how things are alike, and to contrast means to see how they are different. Yes, you're right. And so let's choose the violin and cello. OK, sounds good. Get it? Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> So, let's see how these two instruments are alike. I can clearly see that they both have four pegs at the top of the instrument that is used for tuning each of the four strings. Yep, they both have similar shapes with sound holes on their front surface. They both use a bow for playing the instrument. Now, how are they different? Well, the cello is much larger than the violin. Yeah, and the violin has a chin rest at the bottom end used to hold the instrument while playing. But the cello has a, has a spike at its bottom end used for positioning it on the floor while the instrument is being held 
securely between the knees of the player. Yeah, there's one last thing that is different about the two. Let me guess, the sound? Well, let's check it out to see. The bow is drawn across the strings to produce a sound. We will play the same scale on the violin and cello to see if they sound different. Let's hear what this scale sounds like on the violin. That was really pretty. It was. <laughs> Let's hear what the same scale sounds like on a cello. Pretty. Yeah. I think the cello has a deeper sound because it's bigger than the violin. Yeah, that's right. The violin sound is higher than the cello. Their distinctive sound is called their timbre. Yeah. Well, we saw how the cello, how the violin and cello are alike and different. We heard the differences in their sound quality called timbre. See if you can hear the distinct voices of the violin and cello in the following tune during this break. Nice to see you guys again. I'm Alex. And I'm Jonas. Alright, so each musical instrument looks and sounds differently and fits into um, one of the three following categories, Correct. if you remember. Chordophones, aerophones, and idiophones. Okay, now let's talk about the aerophones. With members of the aerophones, the initial sound is produced by a vibrating mass of air like the instrument shown in the image here. Alright, let's get that. Alright, I'll get it for you to our viewers. Look at those aerophones. All right. Yes, and with aerophones or wind instruments, mm -hmm. the sound is produced by blowing air into the instrument with the help of, devi of a device called a reed to produce the sound. There are three different types of reeds. All right, let's show our reed. viewers her reeds. It's good time for you. Yes, I would like to name uh, the reeds for you, for our viewers. So here are reeds. Of the reeds um, and mouthpieces, there is the lip reed, where the player's lips um, buzz into the mouthpiece uh, with a breath of air. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like a, a trumpet, right? Like yeah. this, um, these types of instruments right here. Yes. These types of reeds. All right. Um, then there is the mechanical reed, typically made out of cane that the player sets into motion with breaths of air, as with a clarinet. Yeah, so those are those here. Yeah, we have the clarinet right here, and that would be the mechanical reed. Finally, there are... Um, Finally, uh, there's the uh, air reeds, where air inside the instrument is sent to motion uh, by the pressure from air continuously being blown across and into the instrument. It's, um, I like lost my train of thought. It's like a flute, right? Yeah, exactly. It's exactly like a flute. This would, this, 
That's uh, the reed of a flute, as we can see here, right? Yes. Okay, let's choose the trumpet and trombone to compare and to contrast. Remember that compare means to see how they are, are alike, and contrast means to see how are they different. Okay. Okay, let's show the trumpet and trombone to our viewers. Okay, so... Okay, let me zoom out a bit to show our viewers. Oops. That's, that's fine. All right. Well, where do we begin? Okay, let's... Okay, my bad. Um, well, let's first start naming them, right, Jonas? Yes. So what we have here is a trumpet. Yes, as you can see by the name right here. And this is, is a the tr trombone. Yeah, you're exactly right. So how are they alike? Well, they're both aerophones, am I correct? Oh yeah, you're totally correct. That's they what both about. seem to be made out of metal with a similar color. Oh yeah, that's true. And you know what else they have? They have like a, a cup-shaped mouthpiece, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, all right. So how are they different? The sound. Am I correct? Well, that, that, that's one way to think about it, but what, what physical features do you see well, that are different? The trumpet seems to be smaller. Oh yes, definitely. And the trombone is definitely larger. I would say longer to longer. be more accurate. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely long. It's, it looks longer, but well, I meant bigger by longer. Yeah, all right. And do you notice what the trumpet has? It has valves, right? Yeah. The trombone doesn't have that. Yeah, it looks like it has a long bar where it's played back and forth. All right. Um, it's a really good observation, Jonas. There's one last thing that makes them different. It's the sound, correct? Yeah, and you said okay, that Okay, I said that earlier. Let's check the sound, see how they're different. Okay, Jonas? All right. I'm going to get that pulled up for our viewers. That okay. sound good. So, we are going to play you a scale on the trumpet, and then we'll compare it to the scale on the, trumbo on the trombone. Okay. okay. Here is, well, I'll let you guess which scale One, it is. Two, three, four. instrument was that? Trumpet? Yeah, that's exactly correct. That is the trumpet. Now let's see how it sounds differently to the trombone. Okay. Well, the trumpet is higher. Oh yeah, definitely. And the trombone is a lot lower. Yeah, it's very low. It's low. All right. So they have different sounds and it's in different voices, right? As we yeah. discussed earlier. Tambor, yes. right? Yeah. All right. So we heard di uh, the differences in sound quality called timbre, as I said. And see if you can pick out the voices of the trumpet and the trombone in the following tune during this break. Yeah. I'll get that pull up for our viewers. All right, you should do that. Hey folks, looks like we are ending the show today. 
We will see you guys next week. We are Tesla from MSI, Teens Exploring Science with a live audience, every Wednesday at 5 p.m. See you guys.